The Norseman is going off. You do not want it with Jack Frost if it pop. I'm not kidding him. A frost was it in him and knock you in the cock with the box of popsicles and it in my drop. You shivering up in the north. Listen to the comedy abominable snowman. When I throw hands, I'm cold and unstoppable. I'm a fox. I'm sly as if I was rocky. Walking in the ring and swinging for minutes and it was rockable. Y'all gripping your balls like it's impossible. But I promise that it's not even improbable. That a scar can be ripping it. It's raw shit. Hot shit. So sick of it. Long so I wanted to ask you, I see you've been working on a lot of new stuff. Um, I saw you just dropped that Frosty the Snowman video with really high yeah. quality production. Like what went into making that and what like what was the idea behind making that, all that? The visual, the song, everything. Uh, well, <clears throat> the video itself, uh, it's actually made by the same guy that did the video for Born Crooked. Um, oh. He just... Yeah, he's a student, uh, nice. and, and he's uh, he's been messing around making videos for a number of years. Uh, he does it for a lot of people here in Norway, and much like with Born Crooked, uh, when I approached him with this fucking video, <clears throat> he was overjoyed. Uh, the guy was extremely fucking happy to be approached with an actual concept because he's tired of rappers over here asking him to shoot videos for them, and he's like, okay, so what have you got in mind for the video? And they're like, oh, I don't know, just fucking me and my mates jumping around with a fucking boombox and, a, you know, maybe some women, some alcohol, some yeah. cars, we'll smoke, you know, same old shit. So um, he loves when I bring him an idea, you know, a visual art, like, idea, like, and not just something that's fucking generic, same old bullshit. Right. So, um... He was naturally the first person I thought to contact after Born Crooked because he enjoys a challenge and he enjoys something fun. And he's very talented. Uh, so I contacted him and asked him like what he'd be able to do, but I had a sort of basic idea of what I wanted from the video. Um, the idea was to kind of get a sort of like a, a supernatural uh, ability to control the ice and frost sort of image. And we'd had a random snowfall occur after we'd had quite a lot of snow and then it had like disappeared. It wasn't in a particularly good uh, visual condition. Uh, aesthetically, it was pretty nasty actually with all the mud and shit. But uh, a fresh snowfall came and it, it, it seemed like just a perfect opportunity. And without having any money, I just contacted him and said, look, dude, this is what I want to do. Can you pull this off? And he was like, well, "Let's fucking find out." <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, we got up. We got on the, the side of a, a mountain here where I live. It's like it's only about a ten minutes drive maximum from where I live. Uh, uh, my that's friend awesome. Marianne drove us up. Yeah, it's pretty cool having that sort of thing around. It's the same with Born Crooked. That was shot like on the other side of the valley, basically. It's the same valley, just the other side. Yeah, that's got to be great to have a lot of good scenery and locations yeah. nearby that you can film. Yeah, we had a whole shot uh, that was taken, like two two separate shots actually of the same uh, same location shot in uh, the center of the town that I live in just because of how fucking cool this one spot was, but we ended up not using it in the video just because it didn't really fit with the overall image as well as it could have. Yeah, yeah. So I, but, wanted uh, to, I wanted to ask you like, what really made you decide to become a musician? Well, um, to be as honest as I can, as short as I can, I needed to. Uh, I have always been quite strongly attached to music. It's always had quite a, a strong, powerful emotional effect on me. And the, like it, what it's been able to do for me in terms of emotional processing and uh, expression is it's been a necessity throughout my life and I first discovered it through listening to music and, and doing like stage performances of, of other people's songs and getting that buzz yeah. and then the, 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 the release of endorphins that comes from singing and shit like that and then I was hooked I think the first time I took to the stage to sing I must have been about 8 um, and oh. I started playing all, all kinds of different instruments and shit so you started That's off pretty early journey. Yeah, um, like I was raised on a healthy diet of uh, different kinds of fucking music, man, like metal, rock, all the way up to sort of like what was quite popular in the 80s, 90s, stuff like that. Yeah, that's um, great. 
all of my family are musicians all of them uh, there are four rappers uh, including my sister um, uh, runs in the blood them. yeah I'm the only one who's really sort of active at the moment the others are kind of tapered off a little bit lately with different things they've been doing uh, my twin brother's a bass player nice I love bass yeah. bass is one of my first passions yeah, he's fucking awesome. This, uh, he used to do this thing, it was cool as shit. Um, he played in a concert with, uh, he, he played in a band with my other siblings. It was um, a bit softer than the kind of music that I like to play on stage when it comes to like rock and metal and stuff like that. So I didn't join the band, but I always loved watching him play, especially when like, he had this suitcase that he got, right? Yeah. And he cut armholes in the sides. And this fucker used to sit inside this <laughs> giant ass suitcase and play the bass on stage. It was fucking fantastic. Ah, and man. Stand straight, upright, and just just fall backwards like a fucking <laughs> fell tree. Oh man, <sighs> I wish I could have seen that. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, my brother's a my brother's a bit of a lunatic. It's great fun. And I wanted to ask you because um, recently, me and you were trading back and forth some music, and you sent me uh, yeah. one of your collabs with uh, Kid Crusher and Kung Fu Vampire, and I wanted to ask you how that came about and the process of that. Um. That came about through OBV Records. Uh, there's a, an old friend of mine. We're not in contact anymore, but that's another story. But uh, she came to me with this concept for a track that she wanted. That was kind of one of the, the first steps in me starting to take things more seriously when I got put on a track with a couple of people whose names not only did I recognize, but I, I respected and enjoyed their music. Definitely. I had them for years. I kid pressure on you from like... 10 years ago so I jumped at the chance um, so Francis uh, she she paid me for my chorus on that one and it was great fun to do uh, I was given the concept of uh, like basically what I was told was that, that it can be written about any kind of sort of adrenaline based sort of blood rush type feeling hence the name blood rush right. and whatever that might be for each person whether that is like through brutal violence or something negative or something positive whatever it is any kind of adrenaline rush type feeling uh, to an extreme uh, can be represented in some way and I thought that would be it's fucking easy for me to write but it took me months it took me months and months and months to be able to get the right kind of sentence structure because it was also thrown to me that uh, she, the, the instrumental was inspired by the Queen of the Damned soundtrack oh that is an amazing and, uh, soundtrack that's awesome I fucking love that soundtrack and that's why I was so excited as well I was so pumped about it because I yeah. love that soundtrack so much but it was hard for me to put the, the words to the paper and, and then when I got it it just clicked and uh, yeah, it took a while to get the artwork put together and put out. But as soon as it went out, I also simultaneously released my first official single. So. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that track. I think it's really unique. And it, now that I'm thinking back uh, on the instrumental, I do kind of hear that Queen of the Dam influence. That's really neat. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the sort of angle I was going for. Oh, random, random fact is that John Davis has always been a big influence of mine. So. Me too. When, as I say, when it was thrown at me, like, fuck yeah, give me that. Hey, some of the instrumentals that you sent me, the shit I'm going to do to them, bro, oh, it's going to be nasty. I cannot wait, man. I'm sure you can hear my uh, corn influence in some of those. Uh... Yeah, I love, I love it. <laughs> I'm going to fuck them up. I can't wait, man. I'm like, excited. John Davis and Corey Taylor, they're both very big influences of mine, plus my own ability to rap. Well, all of that's going to be thrown into my verse. Ah, oh, that's perfect, man. I'm super stoked on that. Yeah. So, how did you actually come up with the name Lex Lethal? Um, well, there was, uh, when I was 16, I started this shit, like, using the name Lex. And I didn't really take it seriously in any sense. I think I, I may have mentioned that before in, in another interview with either you or someone else. I just kind of fucked around with it for a long time. And one of the first verses that I wrote, I, I referred to myself as Lex, although at the time I didn't really go by Lex. I, I had another name that I was known by, the same name my father was known by. So, But Lex became easier to use over here, so now I am. But yeah, I just called myself Lex, and then I went to college with some friends of mine, and I started rapping more, like, more frequently. And the guys I was rapping with there, 
uh, or, or the people we were hanging out with. I can't remember who said it, but somebody said that my rhymes were deadly and I should call myself Lex Lethal. Huh. That was in 2009. That's awesome, man. And that was, yeah, I thought that was fucking great. And I ran with it. The rest is history. Yep. So, I, um, this is something, uh, I wanted to ask as well. When you first started putting out music, did you, were you insecure to put yourself out there publicly? And sometimes when you release a track even now, do you have a, sometimes a fear of negative response? I look at Frosty the Snowman every 25 minutes. The second this fucking in this, uh, interview is over, I can tell you the first thing I'm going to do is go and check the numbers and comments on Frosty the Snowman. I'm insecure every time I put something out. It's the pain of being an artist in my experience. Most artists put something out and then it's nothing but fucking fear for about a week. Yeah, yeah, I agree but, yeah, with that. It, was, it was a lot worse in the earlier stages, no doubt. So... I'm. Uh, you mentioned really. You kind of started dabbling with music and instruments at like eight years old. But when did you really start writing music and taking music seriously? Um, well, I wrote my first song, like full composition, when I was about thirteen. When I got myself an acoustic guitar. Um, but that was. I mean, it was uh, not a particularly well written song. It's the same sort of same six chords and the same two chord progressions and some very immature lyrics. But I think if I'm going to say seriously, I'm maybe about 15, 16 when I formed my metal band Wraith in, mm. uh, in Scotland. And that's about the same time I wrote my first rap verse as well. Nice. So how's the experience been going from Scotland to Norway? Oh, that was... Uh, well, it's been a hell of a road. I'm not the same man who left Scotland by a long shot. Um, Scotland, for me, um, I was I was born and raised in Stirling, and that in itself, there's there's its good parts and its bad parts. Uh, it has its beautiful scenery and its great nightlife, quiet though it is, and it has its its violence and its drug problems and stuff like that. But I moved around and moved to Glasgow and shit like that and got involved in some shit. Started heading down a path that that would have led me somewhere that ultimately I don't want to go. Right. Which is essentially either in a jail cell or a pine box. And like, I saw myself heading for one of those things and I just I didn't see anything, anything healthy from it. So when my partner at the time came over to Norway where she's from, and uh, she came to visit family and passed through a tattoo studio. She got offered a job and asked me if I wanted to move over to Norway with her. It was the easiest fucking yes that I've ever given in my life. I'd been here three times and I'd already fallen in love with the country. The culture is much more relaxed. The uh, the air is cleaner. The food is healthier. You know, it's yeah. so much better place to live. The quality of life is, is better in so many different ways. So it was the easiest yes ever. So do you think looking back on, like you said, if you would have continued in that lifestyle, some bad things would have happened? Do you think in a way no. the career and what you're doing now and deciding to go this direction kind of saved you from that? Uh, yeah, in a way. Um, for a number of different reasons. Um, not only did... Like Scotland's uh, Scotland's rap scene, it has kind of a, a cliquey sort of infighting problem, if you will, where a lot of different artists they, they focus too much on on not helping each other and trying to help themselves out. There's some attitudes towards the appropriate types of industry promotion, like uh, placements on certain uh, playlists here and there to get your music out further and. You know, Facebook and Instagram ads and shit like that. There's negative attitudes to most of the, for most of these people towards these, and that that could have affected my own development as an artist. Yeah. But uh, moving over here in Norway, I started getting back into the security industry, which puts uh, a license around my neck that any kind of the activity that I engaged in back in Scotland would cost me. I would lose mm. that license immediately, yeah. and therefore my permission to be in this country. And my drive wow. has changed. My work ethic has changed. 
even my accent has changed because I've lived here for so long. My music is more clear to people from outside of Scotland because I speak more clearly because of speaking Norwegian for seven years. You know, I, that's one thing I was curious about is because, um, you know, I've talked to some musicians from Scotland and uh, mm. sometimes I've had a hard time understanding them and I was kind of curious yeah. in this interview if I was going to be able to clearly understand you or not. Yeah, well, there's a couple of things that are advantage to that. First, my moving here, as I said, but my mother was also very, she was very focused on us being well-spoken and well-educated in language. And, and all of my brothers, with the exception of my brother John, who chooses to use colloquialisms and pretty much all social settings, were all fairly well-spoken. Yeah. Uh, and the Sterling accent as well, it's, it's not one of the harshest accents in Scotland. It's, it's not like the likes of Glasgow or, or anywhere like that where the right. accent can be more difficult. Well, yeah, you're definitely very articulate, I can, for sure. Yeah, it's uh, both my parents, actually. My mother focused on the, uh, if you will, the uh, scholastic side, the educational side of language, whereas my father was a poet for a long time and a songwriter. Did that have any influence on you? Well, I always liked listening to my dad's poetry, and uh, I was a poet when I was younger, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure if... Uh, if that really had any direct influence, although I practically hero worshipped my father as a child, I'm named after him and I looked up to him a hell of a lot. So it could be, it could be something just subconscious that I picked up. Yeah, but I've always had the interest in language, which I credit my mother for. Do you think that becoming a part of murder music helped you to be kind of get recognition and heard over here in America? Um, yeah, I mean, I think naturally uh, being associated with uh, any association, any organization, any artist uh, in America that has a certain level of respect that will put me in front of their fans. Yeah. Um, it's, it's certainly certainly helped me get the exposure. I'd like to think that the support has been based on my own actions and my own music. Um, but it's definitely put me in front of a different audience. And even before actually joining Murder Music, working with Billy on uh, Belly of the Beast and Born Crooked, those two were quite a large boost, larger than pretty much anything else that I've released in terms of uh, increasing reach, anyway. Right. I, and Around each of those 20 to 30 minimum friend requests out of each one. So a couple hundred new licks. Yeah, definitely. And uh, how did that come about? Did he approach you or? No, I approached him. Um, we we were put in touch by the same person that put me on Blood Rush uh, because both me and uh, Playboy the Beast were dissing the underground artist, the Joker, for his, uh, shall we say, disorderly and uh, dishonest conduct in the underground. Yeah. And one of the one of the talking points that we were both focusing on was the same. So uh, we kind of we started talking over that, and uh, I decided to reach out and ask him if he wanted to get on something about the fact that we basically smashed the guy to pieces individually, and the fact that we significantly uh, continue to do that uh, when or and have previously done that, I should say, yeah. uh, in other sort of other, other situations where there's been an exchange of tracks. We tend to tend to end it pretty quickly. So uh, the last time I spoke with um, Billy Playboy, he said he had multiple failed attempts, <clears throat> failed attempts at creating a label, and that this kind of was more like considered more of a collective. Is that is that kind of more fair to say? Yeah, yeah there's no contract. Uh, there's no. <clears throat> like we're not expected to create a certain amount of music in a certain amount of time and uh, push it to a certain extent and generate a certain income um, we are not expected to make anything specific in any sense um, we, we do what we do we do our own thing and we keep pushing forward and we just represent murder music as we go and uh, we help each other out where we can. Billy gives us the um, the murder music and murder gang logos that we can use free of charge. Uh, he doesn't take any kind of money or anything like that. Nice, yeah, um, so definitely just, pa it's passion driven. Yeah, 
it's all about the music. It's about the underground. It's not mm-hmm. even just about like uh, about the music because I imagine that Billy's Billy's rather famous attitude towards record labels is a big part of the reason why they haven't attempted to approach him. But he's definitely in a position that they otherwise would. Uh, but from a few different things, like with his, his affiliations and things like that, that might be standing in the way of that. But yeah, it's it's shit like that that's the problem. It's it's these little things where someone can't be honest, someone can't be who they are. Um, I mean, yeah, there are certain lines that shouldn't be crossed. But like record labels, they they take talent and they try and shape it and they try and sell it and the artist gets fucked in the process. And yeah. that's that's something that most, if not all, members of Murder Music are aware of and against because it, it damages careers. It, it holds back the underground and we're all fucking paying for it. Yeah, I've noticed like a lot of musicians now are realizing that you know, independent is the wave because of exactly what you just said. Yeah, it kind of has a double-edged sword as well in that like, people are thinking that independent is the wave and you get all these artists that are out there and they're saying, I did this shit myself and, uh, you know, like fucking Drake says, started from the bottom and now we're here right. and shit like that. It's like, they, what they're not portraying is that, yes, these people started from the bottom and now they're there, but they didn't fucking do it all on their own. Even if the only people that I can honestly say right now that are one hundred percent at the top, where they are, uh, like and sort of heading towards mainstream by themselves, is fucking Tom McDonald and his wife because they literally did everything yeah. by hand on their own. The two of them, but like fucking even Billy has outsourced for videos and beats and shit like that. People right, right. fucking. If not everything is done by the artists themselves, no matter how much success is created. And we need to fucking help each other. And oh, yeah, that's what the music is about. It's, it, it's about sharing those connections, about sharing those fucking opportunities and, and lifting each other up instead of fucking rushing first man in to try and snatch up every opportunity before you... Sometimes your fucking friend, people are turning their backs on their friends in order to gain success because of the way that labels treat people. Oh, yeah, for sure. It fucking happens all the time. Yeah, and that's not who any of us are. Yeah, I noticed that. I really respect that. And so definitely it would be fair to say it's more of brotherhood over music. Yeah, we're fucking family, man. I'll I'll be honest with you. Like I've mentioned this to a couple of people, and I was thinking about it just the other day. Um, the day after I officiated my mother's funeral, I went away for a while to just sort of process things on my own. And my family lost contact with me because my phone died as I was heading back to the to my uh, to my dad's house. And one of my family members put out a status on Facebook, and fucking Billy himself tried to contact me, like wondering where I was and trying to find out and, and make sure I was okay and shit like that. Like, these people care about me. They helped me raise over two thousand British for my mother's funeral when she passed. Like they've, when I've said it to them, and I'll say it again now, quite quite loudly and publicly. Don't fucking ever let anybody say these people are my family because they treat me like one. Wow, yeah, that's amazing, man. I love that. That that's fucking inspirational. I really love that. Modern music for life, man. Hell yeah! And, I was, and uh, on that topic, uh, what's the current state of murder music? How's everybody doing? Uh, we're all dealing with our own thing. Uh, here and there, we've got projects on the go. Uh, Plays about to put something out on the twenty seventh. So am I. He's got a video. I've got Frosty the Snowman coming out on Spotify and shit like that. But yeah, the devil's my friend is uh, coming out and music video. I'm excited about that because that's a, that's a sick fucking track. It's dark, and I really I know what I know what Plague's mind is like when yeah. he does um, when he does visual art, and I really want to see that put in a, in a video form. Man, that um, last but, yeah. um, that last fucking joint he dropped. Um, speak, Speaking in tongues. That blew my mind, man. <laughs> yeah. He, he did that because he wanted to see if he could, and by the fucking gods, could he? Oh, yeah, like, he, he could. Nailed that, shit. That, that was incredible, man. I heard that shit, and I, I was fucking, I was bouncing away the fist pumping in the air, like, all the way through my kitchen. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, man. 
but yeah, yeah that's great to hear. Order music, you know? Just trying to keep pushing forward because Billy's been fucking de- uh, deplatformed on everything, so we're just keep working, trying to keep things moving on the, the social media as well. Billy's doing his work. Yeah, and that's one thing I wanted to ask about because I remember seeing that you know he was pretty much shut down. I mean, what was that all about? Yeah. Um, Playboy, Playboy the Beast has been accused by uh, a so-called anti-fascist. Uh, I don't believe he's anti-fascist simply based on his, his actions and behaviors uh, and ignorance, really. Um, this anti-fascist Twitter account has started a hate campaign against the Playboy the Beast, in which he's actually referred to as a white supremacist wow. and a fascist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Mexican-American <laughs> head of a multinational organization featuring a black man, three fucking Latinos, two white guys, and himself... Wow. Uh, and he, you know, he's been a member of the Vice Lords for fucking ever, for most of his life. Yeah. And yeah, so and racist as as fuck. Yeah, sounds like it. Wow, but, that's um, ridiculous. I know. Uh, so this fucking this Twitter account pushed the idea that, that these people should go after this this fascist. And uh, he he basically got reported and and blocked and banned on fucking everything. They banned his IP addresses. They've uh, banned wow. his devices. He like at one point he used uh, his partner's account to share something, and she got fucking banned. And she had to actually appeal it with ID to prove that it was actually her and not him. Like they're really making sure that he doesn't get to. That is insane. To use any of these. That's literally insane. Yeah, and it's not like the the things that are being said. It's like fucking hate speech. Um, like. For starters, yeah, there was some shit that went down at Capitol Hill, and yes, it is alleged that Billy was there, but it is also said that the people that were there, that, you know, that Billy may or may not have been among, were providing aid to those that had been injured, and that they never actually hurt anyone or broke into anything. So it's really, you know, there's a lot of hate and a lot of nonsense coming out that have caused people to punish this man for something he essentially did not do because he hate speech, which he's never fucking committed in, in any sense. He has never actually said anything hateful or negative towards anybody that comes under the category of hate speech. He simply yeah. based his, uh, stated his opinion of actions. You know, that's... Uh, he um... believes what he does yeah and for sure that, yeah. that's he's, one he's thing um, I don't uh, totally agree with the, you know everything Tom McDonald says but um, there was one thing Tom yeah. McDonald said uh, where he says there's a difference between hate speech and speech that you hate and people really get that yeah. confused yeah no, and he's quite right it's like Playboy the Beast was not incited violence in any way shape or form he was standing his ground on his opinion Exactly. And he, you know, he he didn't even in the song to the extent. Yeah, the song has the like the, the lyrics that he's ready for civil war, but that's that's not him saying that like stand up, march and fight. He's right. saying if a civil war breaks out, I will stand and fight my corner, and that's it's quite plain in the lyrics as well. It's not even subliminally fucking suggested in any way, shape or form that he might be inciting violence. He's yeah. just stating that he will fight for his fucking opinion if he has to. And you know, and to me, that that's kind of fucking in a sense that's kind of censoring like freedom of speech man the, the song's been deleted from iTunes and stuff wow. like fucking quite a few times and like they're trying to get it taken down from Spotify and YouTube but thankfully they've not been able to manage that it seems and shit sort of calming down I haven't seen anyone call this fucking Mexican guy a white supremacist <laughs> in the last little while yeah. you know what I mean like what the fuck that is such a reach wow <laughs> I don't know it's madness. Wow, it's, this, I know this guy. I've known this guy. Like, I've, even, even even to call him a fascist, right? The white supremacist, that's a big fucking reach. Fascist, that's in with the, like within the realms of possibility for any minority in the world. Anyone can be fascist. But we discuss politics. I don't fucking like Donald Trump. I don't like the fucking right. Republican Party. I don't like politicians in general. I don't trust a single fucking one of them. Yeah. And we all discuss this openly in Murder Music. And Billy listens, respects our opinions, and offers his in return. He wouldn't even have me 
and murder music if he was a fucking fascist. Exactly. Which as long as he's known me, I've hated his political opinions. <laughs> exactly. That's a very good point of view there. Well, I see his political opinions. I don't hate his political opinions. I hate the, the people attached to these opinions. As well. Right. Because Billy's a good man. He believes in freedom, respect. He believes in anti-racism, not racism. He believes in the opposite of fascism. He believes he was fighting for the freedom of the American people. How the fuck is that fascism? Exactly. That is... You know, I, I really wish him the best. And I, I know he's going to continue to gr- do great things. And uh, do you know how he's going to be able to maybe create a new platform or keep releasing stuff? Like, how's that working? Um, he's looking at the different social medias that he's got. He's got a few that he's dropped before. Um, I think what he's going to do is he's going to gather as many different platforms as he can, build them up a little bit. He'll probably come back and start pulling people off of what Facebook pages he can to go and follow them. Yeah. Because Facebook was the, that was the biggest reach that he had. Thankfully, the Murder Music page is still there, so we can still keep Murder Music going and keep that alive when this shit eventually dies down and people wake the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. I didn't know the extent of it, and that that's really insane. It's, it's ridiculous. It's the the whole the whole fucking thing is ridiculous because like I get it if he was going out telling people to fucking cause damage and hurt people and you know shit like that, but he's not. He's standing up for freedom loudly, and it's quite the opposite of what he's being accused of. It's it's stupid. It is. Uh, murder music. Murder music were apparently referred to as a gateway recruitment fucking uh, organization for the Proud Boys, and I'm like, okay. Wow. Like, there, there are four of us here that fucking hate the Proud Boys. Wow, man. So, uh, uh, no, 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 there aren't. No, we're not. <laughs> that that is just so ridiculous that I have to laugh at it. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. And like me over here in Norway, hey, would you guys like to go and join an organization over in America that you've seen all over the TV and all over social media here to apparently be a fascist organization full of racist pricks? <laughs> you guys want to go and join me? <laughs> no, no, that's not, that's not how that fucking works, man. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to flip it like here. Because I don't know them. All right, so I'm going to flip it here on you because I like to just, all right. I got a kind of a Howard Stern interview style. Um, do you think do you think style and apparel is like really important to success or do you think talent matters more or maybe you need a mixture of both? I think if you get the balance of both then you've got it down pat really. Um I don't like sort of deliberately look to build an image as such to have like a style and a fashion. I just kind of have one that stands out and I always have in one way or another since I was a kid. But like I've recognised that my my Norse faith and uh, Norse heritage and shit like that that's that's become my brand through sheer accident and that that's kind of gotten a lot of people's interest like that's gained some interest along the way. So, but talent is definitely equally important. And in my opinion, I have noticed there are a lot of people up there who you know the talent's questionable right. at best. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, Blueface. <clears throat> Sorry, my chest. <laughs> my chest hurt a little bit there. Um, no, no, but seriously though, what the fuck is Blueface? That is not, that's not rap. That is talking slightly off time with the occasional rhyming. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, I, I can't believe you got a collaboration with Snoop Dogg. That's the thing, money. That's how you succeed in this fucking business. Money. Yeah. Man, I know, it's ridiculous. When I heard that, I was fucking hitting myself in the face. If you want to be world famous, be prepared to chuck your fucking house at it. Yeah. Like, you need you need money. And uh, that's also a good segue you, you were speaking on there a minute ago into my next question is you're very passionate about your an- ancestry and representing it. And um, yeah. you're very proud of where you come from and what you do. And do you, re- you, you yeah. really want that to be known, don't you? Um, well, actually, I don't want it to be known, but I do want anybody who knows me to know it, um, because it is a large part of who I am, and it kind of gives people a decent first impression of what I believe in, as long as they kind of are, if they have the will to learn in any sense what it is I believe in, yeah, then uh, they can learn quite a lot about me from that, how how I look at the world, how I what I believe in myself in terms of moral. 
uh, a lot of that can be can be learned from my faith, and they'll learn that I'm an honest, hardworking, loyal individual who doesn't take any shit. And that's that's summed up in the fact that I believe in the Norse gods and follow their teachings. Yeah, I love that, man. That's great. Seems fair. So, what are your goals for 2021? Um, just build my, uh, build my business. Um, my, my name is being turned into an official brand this year. I'm getting some businesses registered and some, uh, some friends of mine along for the ride. Uh, I've got a producer and a, a video guy as well is going to jump on board. Um, nice. Make some, make some moves, get some collaborations done and push the music out as far as I can. Just keep building that. Hell yeah, man. And, uh, has it been a little while since you you've hopped on some metal shit like the the, the shit that uh was sent over to yeah. you? Yeah, uh, the closest I think we've got is my own track, uh, Grand Declaration of War, which is kind of it's it's quite soft right up until the chorus, and same with Belly of the Beast, and again Blood Rush, another track that's just a chorus. Um, but I've got my my own band Wraith, that uh, not Wraith, sorry, Ravenwing, uh, that, that we've supposed to have been writing stuff lately but uh, we need a drummer so there's been kind of a halt put on that I have been doing metal in the last couple of years the last time we practiced as a band was about a year ago I can't wait to hear some metal shit from Lex Lethal man yeah it'll keep coming man I just like to fuck around with it nobody will ever be able to predict what the sound of my album is going to be because I, I don't pick instrumentals looking for specific sounds all the time if I hear something and it catches me I will grab it and that could be anything as people have probably already heard if they check my Spotify yeah I like that it keeps it keeps it fresh you know it's unique you don't you don't really know what to expect look out for that Norse pagan folk shit going in there hey that'd be interesting oh yeah more horns already and as the world burns that's a little taste of there for everybody for things to come but there'll be different instruments and shit nice so going over from uh scotland and norway did you, know, did you notice a big difference in the the musical scenes is there any similarities uh well i'm not really uh as involved with the norwegian scene as i'd like to be um one thing I have noticed here is I've, I've had a, a rap battle here on a, a, a YouTube channel called Skis TV. Oh uh, yeah, a guy named Doot and Do. Uh, that was that was great. Um, but the one thing I did notice is that they like there was no judging, but I saw how they responded like as a crowd, and how the the other artists that were sort of deliberately paying more attention due to their direct involvement. Uh, they were reacting more positively to the intricate lyricism uh, and, like, sort of off the top rebuttals of my opponent rather yeah. than my humor, which had some wordplay in it, but it was mostly angled at jokes. Whereas in Scotland, a lot of the time, the jokes will win the day, which I find ridiculous. Hey, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm after. Uh, is that video still available up on YouTube? Yeah, yeah I, um, I need to check that out. V's do and do. I can send you a link. Yeah, man, I'd love to check that out. So, would, um, take me through your songwriting process really quick. Like, what? Like, how does it start? Does it start with the lyrics? Does it start with the beat? Just an idea in your head? Um, it starts with the beat every time. Um, sometimes I do have an idea of like things that I'd like to write songs about. But I don't go looking for a beat thinking, right, I need to write a song about this. Uh, when I find a beat, it'll tell me what I want to write it about. Usually, and nine times out of ten, I'll get uh, an idea for the beat once I hear it, like of, of what kind of direction I take it. Um, but writing the lyrics, uh, that can take any period of time, really, from eight hours to uh, fucking a week, two weeks. Uh, I just started writing the other day for a feature that I, I wrote inside four hours and I'm pretty impressed with it. And I, I finished a, a half a verse immediately afterwards that I haven't picked up again. So it's, uh, it's one of those things. There's no pattern. Yeah. The only thing that is a pattern is that I pick the instrumentals first. Yeah. It just kind of comes when it decides to. Yeah. So, could you give me, the, uh, or for anyone listening, really, just a couple words of quick advice for musicians who are curious and just starting out? 
Um, one, be prepared to spend money. Uh, if you think for a minute that you're going to get any kind of success beyond your friend circle and uh, whatever they can sort of reach with the occasional post without putting money in it, you're unfortunately mistaken um, because that's the, that's the way the industry works. Uh, algorithms and things are now holding us back. Yeah. So in order to overcome that, you're going to have to spend money to get good quality production, get a good quality product and put it out there. Uh, secondly, um, don't be afraid to do what you want to do with it and explore what you like to do with it before deciding where you want to go as a musician. Um, my brand developed itself out of sheer um, accident, as I said, due to a line in a song with Playboy the Beast where he referred to me as the heathen. Yeah. And uh, it's, but it's, it's always sort of reflected who I am in that sense because I've allowed more and more of who I am as a Norse pagan to become part of my lyrics and I've, I've had less sort of braided hair with uh, baseball caps or, or fucking bandanas that I, that I wouldn't normally wear on stage and shit and I just started instead wearing like the old bandana I used to wear on my bike or Right. I'd have my hair in one braid, and you know, like I just uh, start letting yourself explore yourself as an artist, and then begin putting yourself out there, and don't put out shit quality products because it will be a barrier. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think that's a great way to put it. I, I put out shit quality products, but I leave them there because I like to, uh, like, I like to have my development as an artist kind of visible. Yeah, and it's kind yeah, of a, so. it's a reminder. You know, yeah, yeah. So what what is Lex Lethal listen to? What like what do you got in rotation? Murder music playlist, my own. Um, I created it in I think it was June, July, just before Born Crooked came out. Um, I put together all my favorite Playboy the Beast tracks and then all my favorite play game uh, T Rev tracks, and then I've evolved it now to where it is. Almost six hours of murder music tracks and features. Nice, man. I gotta admit, it's such a solid fucking team. I, I haven't heard anything recently at all that comes close. I gotta give it to you guys. You guys are fucking solid. Yeah, I don't mean to sound uh, in any way negative towards other, ground, uh, other underground artists, but like everybody in murder music is fucking elite and what they do, every single one of them. And I couldn't be more proud of the team that I'm a part of. Like, I, I did not expect to be a part of Murder Music uh, because they're based in America and I'm here in Norway. I didn't think right. it was ever going to fucking happen. But uh, I've been representing Murder Music and being a, a listener of Murder Music. That playlist, as I said, it's been around long before I was a member because... Yeah, it genuinely is fucking. It's elite shit, man. Like it's good. It is good music. I, I can't stop listening to the shit. Do you think um, eventually there you would ever play a show in America? Yeah, I'm looking into it already. My brother actually lives in Indiana with his wife. Oh, really? So it's uh, it's definitely within the realm of possibility. The only thing is my criminal record. I don't know if that's actually going to affect me because. It's like it's. I've never actually gone to jail, um, so I don't know if it's sort of like if it counts if it's at the level because it's spent now. It's like fucking seven years ago or something like that since the the conviction was spent. So it's not really on my record as far as I know in any real sense. Yeah. So I believe as long as I can still legally enter the country, then yeah, it's definitely on the cards. I've spoken about it with Murder Music I'm actually talking about getting a couple of them over here as well, the ones that can leave the country. That would be amazing, bro. Yeah. That'd be great. I'm really looking forward to that. I met a dude who's going to help hook up some concerts as soon as it's possible here. Yeah, how has the fucking COVID been over where you're at? It's actually not that bad. Um, it's, you know, we've had a couple of lockdown situations, but when I say lockdown... It, it doesn't represent some of the other parts of the world. Right. Uh, what they've had in, in terms of lockdown, like Britain, they've had like zonal curfews and shit like that. Like people aren't allowed to travel to like the, from different areas to other areas and things like that. Yeah. And here, here it's more of a sort of like, please don't do that. 
speak. That, that, that would that would be cool if you didn't do that. And oh, if, if you're going to do that, please wear a mask. Yeah. Oh, you're not going to wear a mask? All right, well, well you stay away from people then. Okay, you're not going to stay away from people? Well, then, that's bad. you're a bad, bad person. I agree with that. Can you do it, please? <laughs> that's, that's basically... Yeah, that's basically what it is. But I, I mean, I do, I do agree with it as well. It's, that is the fundamental foundation of human rights, right there. We do have the right to to say no. It's fucking shit, in my opinion, if people are willing to go out there and do that kind of thing and put yeah. people at risk. If they're knowingly doing so, then you know that's, that's pretty shit. But like, I'm not going to sit there and judge people and hate them because they're trying to exercise their human rights. And I, I, I do appreciate the way that the country has handled things sort of as a whole in comparison to places that have literally been throwing people in jail or handcuffs or beating them or whatever for fucking different bullshit reasons relating to this virus. Definitely. And um, one thing that is giving me hope is uh, that vaccines are like very widely available in Utah, where I'm at right yeah. now. And... Um, Cases within healthcare workers are down sixty five percent, and cases within general population are down twenty percent. That's good. So there's starting to be some sort of an effect from the vaccine. That's another thing, by the way, right? All these people that are talking shit. Oh, the the virus isn't real. It's a conspiracy. The vaccine, the chips, it's going to put in your brain. The way that we fucking know where you are. All this bullshit. Right, right, right. Okay, virus, virus is real. Trust me, I've seen it. Yeah, oh yeah, you know it's real. Worked on the door of a hospital. So yeah. Totally real. Um, vaccines. Vaccines are made by healthcare professionals who are trying to save your life. Chill yeah. the fuck out, right? And my uh, a friend uh, I went to school with. He he died a few months back from the virus, and uh, yeah, this shit's real. It is. It is real. And vaccines. Yes, people get sick. And people will die. It happens with vaccines. It happens with every vaccine. Right. That's what vaccines do. Yeah. Right. They make you a little bit sick in order to allow your body to build up a resistance so that if you get hit with the real deal, it's not going to kill you. Exactly. Exactly. So people need to open their eyes I am. And, and stop being fucking kids. I'm glad to be talking to somebody who uh, understands and, uh, you know, like-minded yeah, I have a friend who's, uh, he's, uh, what was his degree? I think he had a, a PhD in um, biomedical science. So we've had quite a few conversations. And as I said, I've worked on, like, I do security and I've worked on the doors of hospitals. So like, I've met patients and I've spoken to doctors and, and shit like that, virologists. And I know some stuff. I know how the virus is. Yeah. I know how it works. And there's, it is being used, no fucking doubt. It is being used as a method to control us in different ways, a new way to manipulate us and see what they can do. But the virus is real, and some of these fucking pieces of advice are very sound and should be listened to, you know? Oh, totally. I totally agree with you. And um, so, like, what is your ultimate goal you want to accomplish with music, and what steps are you currently taking to achieve that goal? Uh, my ultimate goal musically is to reach as many people as possible with my music and continue to spread a positive message of like empowerment and, and unity and, and everybody actually standing together, working together to make a better world and ultimately to like make sure that we're ready to stand together against the kind of shit that we're facing now, be it a virus or oppressive government or anything. Like try and make sure that as many people in the world can hear my voice and the words that I share and listen. Yeah. Like really listen. Like it doesn't to me. It doesn't matter if it comes out of my mouth. Even if fucking somebody else hears it and spreads the same word to somebody else, and like people understand that we are. Like yeah, I'm a, a spiritual person, but to an extent, it has a connection with science, and there's science in the foundations of my faith in many different ways. And the the fact of the matter is, both spiritually, spiritually, religiously, and even scientifically, we are one fucking planet. And yeah. we live all together, and this virus proves it better than anything else. We need to be unified in its own way. Like, but I don't mean like fucking new world order unity. Right, right. I don't right. mean one government unity. I mean we're all fucking humans, and we need to stop fighting each other over political opinions, color of our skin, musical taste, fucking whatever this celebrity did or didn't do. Like, uh, punish bad people, and let's be good together. You know what I mean? Fucking hell. Yeah, I totally salute that, and I totally agree with that, and I couldn't have put it better in my own words, man. Uh, what am I doing to achieve that? Um, just I'm just going to keep pushing it, man. Keep pushing my music, keep writing about different social 
issues and, and, and different points of view. Just persistence. Mm. Lots of persistence. That is key. Another piece of advice for those uh, newcomers. Just keep, you're going to fall. You're going to fail. Things aren't going to work out. You're going to face obstacles. Just keep moving. And it's the only way to do it. And it sounds hard. It's going to be hard. Just do it. It's the only way. Otherwise, yeah. you're just not going to. So obviously murder music has um, been a huge uh, help of promoting you, but uh, what are some steps that you personally take to effectively promote yourself? Uh, well, I've paid for some uh, some Facebook ads and uh, a couple of Instagram ads. Um, I do some Twitter uh, sort of placements with people where they'll do posts for me. Um, nice. I do... Uh, playlist placements on Spotify and I've done one YouTube uh, placement on Spotify as well um, but like mostly I'll like I'll, I'll contact people and I'll like engage with people and go into different groups and, and speak to different artists I go into uh, live review shows and promote my music there post it and speak to other artists to work with collaborations you know Money, that's how. <laughs> yeah. Again, we're back there. <laughs> uh, I've actually, since the album itself um, that I've got coming out, Reflections of Self, um, it's about, I think I've spent about three and a half thousand uh, British putting that together as an album. Wow. Like musically, instrumentals, production, like all the shit involved with features and whatnot. And that includes some of the stuff that's out now. Uh, plus, like remastered versions of. Well, that's but, uh, that's awesome though, because it, it it shows yeah. you you know that you really want it to be quality. You want to give your fans quality. Yeah, and here's the kicker. Here's the part that not a lot of people don't realize is of that album, a nine song album, right? I have released five songs from that album. Do you know how much money I've spent promoting that music? About six and a half thousand. Wow. Because you've got to put money into it. I've earned damn near a thousand from it. I'll, I'll put my hands up right there. Since I started doing this in April, like professionally with like proper streaming and proper distribution and shit like that, uh, through merch and uh, through streaming, I've earned damn near a thousand. If we were to include features, I've probably earned about just over one and a half thousand since April through music as British. So that's probably about 1,800 per, uh, no, um, American. Yeah, it'd be right around there, yeah. So for somebody who's, as as far as my professional career is going, for somebody who's essentially just starting out, I'm doing all right. Yeah, man, that is not bad at all. But you do have to put money in it. You do. And uh, I got one last question for you, but before I do, I just want to say thank you. Uh, this has been a great episode, a uh, lot of great stuff we've been talking about here. and. Uh, yeah. I just want to thank you for that. Thank you, man. It's been great doing this, man. Good to talk to you. All right, so... Thank you. I got one last question for you, and it's just... Well, actually, shit, that's not even really a question. It's uh, just to give a message to your fans, supporters, and anyone who's helped you along the way. Okay, I've always... Um, I've always had some... Uh, some things that I've wanted to, to say to people, but like finding the right words, shit. All right. Um, first and foremost, thank you to everybody who has any kind of faith in me as an artist, uh, as a musician, as a music lover. Um, I really appreciate you because uh, I, I know how music affects people and, and it's not just something you enjoy listening to. There's, there's a chemical process in the brain that makes you either like or hate what you're hearing. And, and these people... They they like me and that fucking blows my mind and thank you all to every single one of you who are out there listening to my stuff, sharing it, buying merch, uh, dropping your comments. Those who send me messages, I, I fucking I'm so humbled by some of the things that you say. Uh, to the people who've helped me get to where I am, I'm, I'm going to give a, a quick shout out to Frances for the things that she did, regardless of her friendship being over. I appreciate what she did putting me in touch with Billy and the Blood Rush and things like that. 
um, with Billy as well, joining him. And I hope you can, you're listening, my dude. Like, thank you very fucking much for putting me on murder music. I will not let you or anyone else on the team down. And to anybody else that I've ever worked with in any capacity to improve my career and my approach, thanks for pointing me in the right path. Uh, thank you for your support, and I look forward to continuing to work with each and every one of you. Perfect, man. That was perfect. I love it. And if really quick, if you would just, just so I can uh, help to improve myself, uh, how would how would you have rated this interview? I definitely rate this a ten. Um, I've done a few different interviews here and there, uh, and that would be a ten out of ten. Like uh, the questions were well structured. We didn't meander off too much, but there was room to talk. Yeah. You know? You've, you've done a good job, good questions with some insight provided through them, and you haven't repeated yourself from the last interview. I have, but that's just because questions crossed. <laughs> yeah, that was one thing I really, I didn't want to disappoint you. I didn't want to ask a lot of the same shit. <laughs> nah, you've done great, man. I like this interview. It's a good one. Oh, well, thank you, man, and I hope you have a great night, and uh, I'll be in touch when this is about to drop. I look forward to it, my man. I look forward to it. All right, man. You have a good night. You have a good night, everyone. Peace, Lex, Lethal, the Wolf, the Heathen. Check out my shit everywhere. It is fucking everywhere.